around the planet on the World Wide Web. The Adam's Addiction on this Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the week again. Just like December 25th signifies Christmas, April 5th represents Easter, and March 29th is the date of WrestleMania 31. Thursday nights mean one thing and one thing only. It's time for your weekly dose of The Adams Addiction, presented to you by The Adams Experience, coming to you on SRB Radio. I am your host, Matty Adams, and I'll be keeping you locked in throughout tonight's proceedings. Last week saw the Adams Addiction open the curtains on of 2015 with a bang. There was a big episode of Mugget Feeling. We had music on the show from the very best in the new year that the Midlands had to offer in the lives of MK and the Ways and Odyssey. This brings me nicely into tonight's show. We'll have a top 10 countdown with the DJs tip to break out and take 2015 Boy Storm as voted by you, the Adams Addict. But before we get into things, for those of you who have missed any of the previous episodes, which is your first time tuning in to The Adam's Addiction, this is a show all about promoting the best the Midlands have to offer. We play the best Midlands music, interview the finest Midlands talents, and provide the best Midlands banner. And the best thing about this show is it's 100% free. This show is all about opportunity. It's all about making your voices heard, whether you're a local music talent, sporting hero, or you're entertaining just in general. I want to hear from you. And who knows? You could be sat opposite me one day in the hot seat answering the biggest questions Thursday nights have to offer. To get in touch with the show, simply tweet me or email me at the Adams XP or Matty underscore Adams at hotmail.co. UK. Now on to tonight's broadcast. Making up for last week's short and show, tonight's show will run long beyond the hour mark as we feature 10 of the most promising and eye-catching talents the decks have to offer in the world of music today as we count down the 10 DJs as voted by you to break out and take the year of 2015 Boy Storm to make their names known and their music heard. We will also have a slightly altered version of My Gut Feeling this weekend. With the FA Cup fourth round in action, the usual format won't be able to be followed as the Premier League is not in action this weekend. So we decided to take advantage of the start of the road to WWE's WrestleMania. This Sunday sees the Royal Rumble take place and whilst I'll be up Broad Street with the boys watching it live and in colour, myself and Luke Turner will take you through our gut feeling of what we think will happen at the 28th annual Royal Rumble pay-per-view this coming weekend. On Tuesday night, I also had the privilege to interview the highly talented duo of Violent Blondes. Born and raised in London, these girls are set to take the world of techno by storm behind the decks and are definitely ones to watch out for. So all of that is coming up on tonight's show. And without further ado, let's get things underway. Let's get the Adams Addiction Top 10 Tip Breakout DJs of 2015 underway. As voted by you, the Adams Addicts, in at number 10 is a man who I saw bring the house down at Outbreak Festival at the Rico Arena last October. From the northeast of England, this Geordie has been tipped for the big time in 2015 by several dance music fans, flowing heavily with Deep House, Tech House and Techno. Here is a taste of Christoph with his remix of At To One, Stealth on Noir Music. Enjoy, guys. The weekend starts here. Number 10. 10. 10. 10.
That was number 10, as voted by you, the Adams Addicts. That was Christoph. Follow him at Christoph Music and check his music out. He's a big talent. Anyway, up next on the chart, in at number 9, this man has received massive support from the likes of Disclosure, Hannah Wants, just in mind. He's making his 2015 debut with Defected Records. Here is French star Little Boy Little with Bang the Box. Brings back several OB for memories. Check this one out. indeed bang the box boy little boy little keep your eyes open for him in 2015 one of my tips for the year to make it big in 2015 watch out for little boy little well next on the adam's addiction we count down to number eight this is a duo who truly set the world alight in ib for this past summer having seen them strut their stuff behind the decks in sankeys i couldn't get their beats out of my head when they left that when i left that island and after listening to them over and over again, they've grown to become one of my most favourite acts from the Viva Warriors label, originating all the way from Copenhagen in Denmark. Here is a girl duo known as Anik with their latest remix of Sing by Pete Dorling. Enjoy. Number 8. <laughs> We'll be right back. 
That was, of course, the Anik remix of Sing by Pete Doyling. Follow him on Twitter at Anik DJs. Anyway, to recap so far, number 10, Christoph. Number 9, Little by Little. And number 8, Anik. That's all by, voted by you this past week on the Adams Experience blog by you, the Adams Addicts. Time to take an, a breather now on the music front. Uh, with an interview coming up later with the Violent Blondes on the show. It's now time for the latest instalment of My Gut Feeling. This is one for you, the wrestling fans of the world. SRBRadio.com Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Adams Addiction. And it is now time for that part of the show. You football fans, well, I apologise there. You wrestling fans have all been waiting for because this is My Gut Feeling and... Due to the fourth round of the FA Cup this weekend, there will be no Premier League games, so therefore we can't do your standard five-match accumulator and predictions. So I thought I'd take advantage of a once-in-a-year event in the build-up to WrestleMania, just before the fast lane. It is going to be the Royal Rumble, the 28th annual pay-per-view event this coming Sunday. We see a host of tag team matches. In fact, they're all tag team matches, despite the main event, and the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. I'd like to introduce my guest on the show, making his return from last week. And following the Raw reunion on Monday Night Raw, the reunions of the New Age Outlaws, the NWO, and of course APA, it's the reunion of the Spanish announced table and the squared circle. I welcome back Luke Turner. What's going on, everyone? You're going to be in for an awesome show. We're going to rock it with our predictions, and we're going to make the best predictions money can buy, so stay tuned for this one. And if he does go a bit wayward with his predictions, do take into account that he's got a bit of rum and coke in his system. What inspired the rum and coke decision, Turner? Oh, you know, you make it sound like I'm some sort of alcoholic, and I had a cheeky rum and coke because I come home from work, you know, it's been one of them days in the office, so I thought, you know, I'd pour myself a little little drink, I think I'd well deserved, so. Just to spice up this particular episode of My Gut Fan. Right. So without further ado, let's get into things. On the kickoff show this, this coming Sunday, sees a six-man tag team match between A New Day, Big E, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods, facing off against Cesaro Tyson Kidd. And a character I can't really jump on the bandwagon. I'm not really a part of the Rosebuds, Adam Rose. Luton, what do you think is going to go down Sunday? What's happened so far? Uh, well, I think in the pre-match show, that's what we're discussing at the moment. Uh, it's you know, Who cares about it? Why, why is this match even like... It shouldn't even be on the pre-show. It's like, there's enough tag team matches as it is, and there's no one needs to see this match. And I frankly couldn't give a rat's ass what way it goes down, to be honest. But just for the record, because we are doing predictions... I think I can see Cesaro, Kid, and Rose getting the win on this one. Yeah, I believe Cesaro, Kid, and Rose will get the win as well. Um, Cesaro and Kid have been highly tipped to take the tag team division by storm this year. Um, they've impressed such commentary greats as JR, Jerry Lawler over the past few weeks with their skills in the ring. Adam Rose, I, th- I don't know, he's kind of an awkward third wheel on a date, so to speak. Like he shouldn't be a part of the team. I don't. I don't know why. And I don't think the new day has really lifted off since they've debuted. They've just collaborated three single stars who go nowhere and just thrown them together into a stable. Lloyd, do you agree? Yeah, well, the thing is, we look at the comparison. New day, they took three, you know, pretty mid card talent, and who didn't really have anything to do, to do, no programs, no feuds, and they tried to make them to get a reaction. And you know, it's not really. It's worked to an extent, you know, but it, I can't see it going anywhere. As in terms of Cesaro and Kid, um, again, you've got two workhorses, two great technical wrestlers that can hang with the best of them. They've not really got the push, uh, especially Cesaro, that feels he deserves. And mainly because Vince McMahon feels he's lacking that reaction. But if they turned him face, then he was getting the support. He could easily get that push. But, you know, they tend to focus on other, other talent. But as a team, technically, you know, you can't fault them. And um, it'll be interesting to see what they can do with the division. Switching on to the main card now, opening the show, I feel will be the Ascension taking on the New Age Outlaws. The New Age Outlaws returned to Monday Night Raw this past Monday night. Uh, the Ascension have been 
well, powering through the competition in, in the form of local jobbers. They finally got their comeuppance this weekend against all the legends. What do you think is going to go down, Turner? Uh, well, I think opening the show is going to be the tag title match. Just give my two cents there. I think that's going to open the show. All right, all right, Turner. I think this will be more of a fill up in between the main matches, but I can't see it lasting more than five minutes, and that's my reason why like, I don't think they'll open for such a short match. Uh, the Ascension will get the victory here purely because the Nia Jack Lawrence got nothing to gain. They'd have had their time. They just used purely, I reckon, to give the Ascension some credibility and to put them over. They've had great matches in NXT against... Um, you know, Kenta, you know, now Hideo Itami and Finn Balor. If you've not watched them, check them out. On the main roster, they've just been going on against local jobbers, but it's mainly just to build them up a little bit and to give people some exposure really to who they are and what they can do. So, yeah, I can feel an easy Ascension victory here. The New Age Outlaws have a few good spots, but Ascension victory all the way, it's still, I can't see it being any other result. Yeah, I, I totally agree. The Ascension to win. Um, they're all up and coming. They're like the next Legion of Doom, the next Hawk and Animal, so to speak. Um, I'm loving the theme song I'm loving the gimmick it's fresh it's new and I feel it could maybe kickstart the Attitude Era tag team division maybe they're the first of many to come through the system up next we have in my opinion arguably the most pointless match well besides the Adam Rose match one of the most pointless matches on the card Paige and Natalia teaming up against the Bella Twins in the tag team match the title's not even on the line. What's there to gain for, for anyone from this match? Paige has had a slow face turn over recent weeks by aligning herself with Natalia, who should, in my eyes, have a one-on-one Divas title match with Nikki Bella. Um, I believe the Bella Twins need to be booked strong here, heading into Mania. I feel Bella, like Nikki Bella will lose the title at WrestleMania. Bella Twins to win this one for me. You? Uh, I'm actually going to go Paige and Natalia. I think they'll get the win uh, with this one. Again, a pointless match. You know, uh, another match no one really cares about. It's just used to fill time on the card, isn't it, at the end of the day? Um, but yeah, Paige and Natalia to get the win. and I don't think there's much more to say on that, to be honest. Now on to the WWE Tag Team Tour match. The fourth Tag Team match of the match card. <laughs> Uh, it's going to say WWE Tag Team Champions, the Usos. God knows how many times I've said that through 2014, 2015. They've ran rampant over tag team competition over the past year. It's For me, it's almost become like a John Cena 2006 WWE title reign. People are going to start turning on them, booing them, like they did Batista when he returned at the Rumble last year. They take on the Miz and Miz Day, arguably the more entertaining tag team. However, for booking purposes, I feel the Usos will win this one because everyone wants to see Miz versus Miz Day at WrestleMania. Everyone wants to see that big face turn for Damian Miz Day, turn him back to Sunday and get that push he finally deserves after dropping the Money in the Bank gimmick when he lost to Cena on Raw a couple of years ago. Turner? Um, yeah, I think the Uzos will win this, uh, partially because what you uh, you know touched on there, Miz and Mizdal. Uh, you know, yeah, it'd be an interesting match at Mania. You know, Damon Sandow's a face he would get over. He's got charisma. It's funny, and given the right lines, you know, he can he can really get the crowd behind him, so it'll be interesting to see. In regards to the tag team match, the Uzos to win, uh, they'll be booked quite strong, I think, to sort of give credibility back to them and to the titles. And logically, at WrestleMania, I can probably see him going against the Ascension if the Ascension are booked strong still up until Mania, uh, and then dropping the totals to the Ascension at Mania. That's what I want to happen, and I love the way that it's going, happen. the way it's going, that's what I think. I think it's still it's on track for that sort of course. So it'd be interesting to see. And obviously, the the sub main event, so to speak, the big the biggest match on the card besides the Royal Rumble is the WWE World Heavyweight Championship Triple Threat match. you got World Champion Brock Lesnar taking on John Cena and Mr. Money in the Bank Seth Rollins for the title. Um, it's been a massive build. Uh, this past week on Raw saw the return of Sting, costing um, the authority, you know, the bragging rights, so to speak, which saw Roy back, Rowan, Ziggler all get their jobs back. Um, and then Lesnar just came out and caused carnage, destroying the authority. Um, for me, Brock Lesnar to retain it only makes sense. Um, he's got a contract up until the night after WrestleMania, and then he's strongly rumoured that he's departing for UFC again. Um, so, yeah, I believe Brock Lesnar to win this one. 
Yeah, you know, I agree. It's the fact that it's now a triple threat match is a lot more intriguing to me than just seeing the versus Lesnar. It's made me want to watch it a lot more. Um, going into it before the triple threat match, I was pretty much 100% sure that Lesnar was going to retain. Now I'm more like, you know, 60% sure. I still think he'll retain and set up a main event feud with the Royal Mobile, which we'll get on to in a second. Um, but there's a lot more possibilities now than what there was before. You know, there's a lot of speculation that Rollins is going to cash in his briefcase um, after the match and go into the championship, uh, you know, at Mania with the title um, championship match, which will be good. But has he really got the star power to head on WrestleMania yet? He's been, you know, he's no doubt the most overheal on the roster at the moment. But I think Lesnar will retain, but there's the possibility that Cena might win it momentarily and then Rollins will come in and cash the briefcase on him. Um, I'm excited to see it either way. I reckon it's going to be one of them two scenarios that will happen. Do you reckon there's, there is any chance uh, Rollins could cash in on Sunday night? Yeah, there's a strong possibility. Like I say, um, with Lesnar at the moment, he's contracted up to Mania, so he's not going to want to miss that payday. And you've got to see him heading in strong with the title. There's not really anything else I can think of top of my head that he could be f- uh, feuded with. But again, it'd be interesting to see, you know, say Cena did win and then Rollins cashed in on Cena. And then Rollins and Lesnar have had a bit of a, you know, they've had a bit of a spark backstage, have gained some interest. And Lesnar, you know, maybe going face into Mania against Rollins if Rollins was the champion. Again, that would be awesome to see. But where does that leave Cena? You know, it's it's up in the air. But I think there's a chance Rollins can win. But overall, I think Lesnar's going to retain. See, that's what I love about wrestling: unpredictability. Something we haven't had enough of since I started watching it. You know, six on back on a religious basis after. Not watching it for several years after the Attitude Era. Anyway, on to the big main event. The once-a-year match. 30 men enter the ring. 29 have to be eliminated. One man is left standing tall. It is the Royal Rumble match. As Justin Roberts said, every single year, let's get ready to rumble. Obviously, he won't be saying it this year. He's been released. So they're gonna have to leave it down to the the boys that walk about this weekend. Um, so obviously we're just under a week a week to go till this star started event. Luke Turner, who who are your favourites? I think uh, without a shadow of a doubt, the favourites have got to be Reigns and Brian. I think that's pretty uh, pretty apparent. Them two have been booked quite strong going into it. Um, you know, I can't see Brian losing to Kane this. Uh, this throw down being out of the rumble, and I just can't, I just don't think that's going to happen at all. But Reigns and Braun going into it, they're the two facts for me. Um, I thought Reigns is going to win it for a long time, and I still do think that um, because he's been pushed so hard from the WWE over the last six months. And Vince McMahon wants to get behind and get him on the same level as Cena. He's been getting good reactions from the crowd. Uh, so, yeah, I can see a Roman Reigns victory this Sunday. And I still think that, you know, the Royal Rumble is supposed to be, it's that one time a year where everyone gets excited, where it's like, there's nothing else like it throughout the year. Everyone loves unpredictability, the surprise entrance, return of legends, return of attitude areas, you know, it's the return of superstars that you would never see again for like maybe another year, another two years. It's going to be an exciting card, but for me, uh, Reigns is going to win. So I have to disagree with that. I reckon Reigns and Brian will be the last two. It would be stupid if it wasn't them. Um... Obviously, if it's just one or the other being the last two, then you're obviously going to know who's going to win. Everyone wants to keep guessing until the final two. Not like where it was Alberto Del Rio and Santina Morella a few years ago, and everyone was like, Santina Morella in the last two is never going to happen. And look where Del Rio's ended up now, Ring of Honor. But um, for me, it's Daniel Bryan. It's Daniel Bryan, the underdog. The underdog story's not over. He held the title for two weeks. Two weeks after overcoming all those odds last like last year to receive a severe career threatening neck injury, being out for so long, he's back this year, back with a bang, and the ultimate underdog slaying the beast. It's it's your perfect David versus Goliath scenario. Like that brings me to my WrestleMania 31 main event prediction: Daniel Bryan to be Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. No, I, I know you've got different thoughts, like with Reigns, the cashing, possibly. Yeah, I disagree with Daniel Bryan winning it. It's going to be close. I do, I do agree, I think it's going to be Reigns and Bryan, but Bryan had his moment last year. Yeah, he only held top for a short period of time, but he had his WrestleMania moment. He had that underdog push. He had that same storyline. It'd be pointless, in my opinion, to do that again. Um, you know, with Bryan going forward with that. I think Reigns will win. I can see, I can see it being Reigns versus Lesnar at Mania. 
I can see that happening. As for Brian, I think he's going to be booked strong still, but I can personally see him feuding with Wyatt at Mania. And I'm actually Wyatt. Wyatt's been booked really strong over the last couple of months with Big Richard, Dean Ambrose, and again, he beat Riot, Brian on Raw. Uh, you know, this past week, and I can see them having a match at Mania. Um, in regards to the Royal Rumble itself, I do think Reigns will win, but what I want to happen, which I think would be an awesome scenario, just picture this, you know. Here we go. In the lights, you know, lights on bright. Uh, Ziggler to win the Rumble, and then to, if Cena got the title at the Royal Rumble, and then if it was Cena and Ziggler, but Ziggler turns heel because Cena got him fired, and he's listened to all the crap Cena's been going on, and Ziggler joins the authority, and you know, teams with Rollins and gets that championship. Again, it's unlikely, but you know, it'd be, it'd be good one, to see. one can always fantasy book. As for fantasy booking, who would you love to see return at the Royal Rumble this weekend? A surprise return? Um, there's some classic legends in there that you think of it that would be wicked to see back again. I remember a few years ago, returning the Godfather. That was that was pretty awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. He, like he lasted half an hour in the Royal Rumble because of his entrance purely, <laughs> and then he was straight back over that top roof. I think what I'd like to see, I'd like to see right to sense of returning, which is like Stephen Richards or maybe Val Venus or Bob Buchanan. That gimmick. Bob Buchanan, um, really? Just because they got so much heel heat in the Attitude Era, people hated them. And they hated him with a passion, and not many people can generate that type of heat these days. Just hear that that music, that car alarm going off in the background, man. You know, I'd mark out if that happened. Man. I'd be good if a car alarm went off now and had to start this recording all <laughs> over again. Or we'll right to censor's ringtone. I'd l- I think I think a return for the Dudley Boys. I read somewhere on WrestleZone.com, um, and that would be awesome. Seeing the while well, they're twenty five time tag team champions back in WWE, they're rumored to be. Uh, hired as NXT trainers. Um, I'd love to see them in a rivalry with the, the Ascension as well. Like, continue that theme of the Ascension feud with Attitude Era tag teams. That would be wonderful. Yeah, that would be, you know, you can't argue that. That would be a great match. I've actually had doubt. I read as well the Dudley Boys would return. Um, again, that's yet to be seen, but it'd be good if they did. Uh, you know, some of the spots are going to go to the NXT talent as well. Personally, I'd like to see Finn Balor in the Rumble. Um, you know, if he does the entrance like the R Revolution with the face paint, you know, that'd be wicked, give him some exposure. See, that's too early for me. I think Adrian Neville, he's he's done his run, he's done his gig in NXT, he's been the champ, now is his time. Yeah, I think Neville will be in there, you know, Neville will be up there with me as well. Um, another person would be interested in seeing him would be Sami Zayn as well, he's been on a good good role at the moment. I'd see him have a couple of uh, eliminations and just have his moment as well, get, just get the younger talent some exposure would be good. I know, no doubt about it. And of course, that has been our gut feeling. Anyway, up later on the show, we've got the interview with the Violent Blondes. And we continue with the countdown of your top 10 DJs you expect to break out in 2015. That was, of course, my gut feeling. Once a YouTube and sensation, narrow radio success. Apologise to the football fans who were expecting big FA Cup upset predictions of who I thought will come out on top this weekend. One that I do think could spring a few surprises and, you know, it might be worth uh, putting your uh, money where your mouth is this weekend. Uh, Rochdale of Stoke. You heard it here first on the Adams Addiction. Anyway, back to the chart now. In at number seven, as voted by you, the audience, is a German DJ who's been climbing the ranks in the world of DJing rapidly over the past year or so. I got an interview with him upon my return from Ibiza for data transmission. It was a pleasure to talk to. He's a guru behind the decks in Sankey's in Ibiza. This is Santi teaming up on a record he did with Sidney Charles. This is All Night Long. Number nine.
Truly incredible, one and only Santa. Check him out on Twitter at Santa Music. What a talent. He's in at number seven. So now the countdown continues at number six. This has been an absolute sensation in the UK charts as of late. He's got the whole of the UK, the whole of the world talking about him. And he's set to be a major player in 2015. However, you guys have only voted him in at number six. Here he is all the way from Nottingham. It's Philip George with Wish. You were mine. Number six. Oh, it's oh. 
That was Philip George in at number six with the ever addictive Wish You Were Mine. Follow him at Philip George UK. We have now officially arrived at the halfway point of our chart. Santi and Philip George enter the chart seven and six as voted by you, the addicts. It's now time for number five, one of three men rising from the city of Newcastle on our chart today. Big up your Geordies. Um, he has done incredible things last year in DC10 in Ibiza, all over Ibiza in fact. This man has been redefining house from various corners of the music globe with elements of disco, techno, funk and hip hop. Here is Richie Ahmed with his remix of Me and You by Neil Parks. Enjoy. Number five. Number four, following Richie Ahmed's in entrance at number five. Follow him on Twitter, Richie underscore Ahmed. Now, from one Jordi to another, in at number four, this man needs no introductions. Capturing the world with his summer hit, Forget Last Summer. You guys vote him in at number four on the Adam's Addiction. Here he is with Forget. It's the one, the only, Patrick Topping. Number four. Just joining us, you are locked into the Adams Addiction. It's Thursday night. We kick things off at 8 p.m. Top 10 DJs ready to break out in 2015. Being counted down as by you, the Adams Addicts. I'm your host, Matty Adams. And if you missed that one, that was number four by Patrick Topping. You can follow him on Twitter uh, at Patrick Topping. Now it's time for the second interval between the music on this week's show. Before we discuss the top three, I got a chance to sit down and talk with one of the fastest rising double acts in the world of techno. Growing up together with a passion for the genre of techno music, these two girls come from London and are on a massive mission to inject their own sense of glamour into the world of electronic music. This is my interview with the Violent Blondes. 
Uh, we're back on the Adams Addiction. Our guest this week, none other than the Violent Blondes. How are you doing, girls? Hi. Hi. Um, I'm doing but, very well, thank uh, you. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm very good. I'm very good, despite the uh, snow tonight. <gasps> it's snowing. It's snowing. Do you like do, do you like the snow? Are you big fans of the snow? It can be. It's pretty on the first day. We like it for 24 hours. <laughs> My, well, back when I was a kid, it was good for snowballs and that, but. It's not yeah, good when you're the driving. Boys would attack us at school, and you'd have enough after like 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, for the benefit of the listeners, first things first. Uh, what are your full names, and where are you from? So I'm Nicola, um, and that's Annabelle, and we both went to school together. Um, we're both from London, born and bred girls. Yeah. No, we've been friends forever. So. What part of London? Really... East London. East London. Oh, yeah. Hammers fans. Absolutely not. Yeah. Spurs. I am. Spurs. I am. <laughs> I'm forever Spurs. No, I, I was actually um, I was actually born in North London uh, and then brought up in East. So I've always felt like my roots lie in North over East. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the name Violent Blondes is very intriguing. Um, what's the reason behind the name choice? Um, so we throw our own um, our own events called Friday Thirteenth Club. We throw them every Friday Thirteenth, um, and basically one of the cocktails is called the Violent Blonde, and it's our most popular cocktail. Um, we always run out of ingredients on the night. It's always a total it's always a total sort of sellout drink. So when we when we began to DJ, um, it was just t- everyone was like, please tell me you're going to call yourselves the Violent Blondes, just because it was a name that was so associated with us anyway. So uh, so yeah, it was totally it was totally organic, really. That's how it came about. Um, for those unaware of your DJing style and genre, would you care to tell us a bit more about it? For those unaware of your DJing style, would you care to tell us a bit more about it? Well, we we take a lot of influences from a lot of different DJs, um, but we like a much darker, raw sound. We're big into techno um, and anything that gets people dancing, really. I mean, when we first started raving, which was actually only a few years ago, um, and going to you know the, the the sort of parties that we DJ at now, um, techno was very much was the first type of uh, uh, electronic dance music that we were both personally introduced to. So I feel like that's why we we've always had a stronger connection with it over the other genres because it was when we first got taken to those type of parties. That's what you know. Um, that, that that's what we were listening to. Um, um, how were you introduced to the world of techno? Pardon? How was you introduced to the world of techno? Hot boys, friends. Hot, hot boys. <laughs> hot boys. <laughs> Did you have, like, any early career influences? And do you see that yourself as being as big as them one day? I mean, of course, you know, Nick and I have a huge vision for, for Violent Blondes. Um, you know, we, we, at the moment, you know... We definitely know the path that we want to take, you know, where we, you know, we want to be successful, um, you know, and we want, you know, we want to influence, we want to touch people, you know, the way certain artists and certain tracks have touched us, um, you know, and, and kind of bring something a little bit different, something a bit more feminine, yeah. but dark at the same time. Yeah, we want to connect with more females. You know, it disappoints me every time, you know, we DJ and we go to, to raves. You know, there's just not enough females, you know, out there digging it. Don't get me wrong, they definitely exist. You know, well, look when, at when, us. when we're playing at the parties, all the girls come running to the front, yeah, and throwing we... their arms in the air and loving it. And, and yeah, good we really, really dig the vibe from the girls, and we're really, really, really trying to attract more girls. Um, Just get them to into techno parties. And, and yeah. Never a, ba- never a bad thing if you're a boy going to arrive then. <laughs> Pardon? It's never a bad thing if you're a boy going to arrive then. Well, there, there needs to be more girls. It's the absolutely girls. not. It's it's nothing to do with the boys. You know, God, we, you know. The thing is, it's not, you know, it's going, not about being boys and girls, It's not yeah. about hooking up. It's about everyone being in the same room, enjoying the music and not caring. Exactly. You know, next to them, everyone's sort of one person. Um, so how did the Violent Blondes form? So, uh, for example, how did you meet each other and how, like, so what made you link up? Best friends forever. Um, you know, we've spent every day with each other since we were about 10, 11. Um, and so we went into business together throwing events about four or five years ago. 
um, and we were spending a lot of money booking DJs and one day we just decided to give it a go ourselves um, so it was, it was very natural it, it just happened and um, having played classical music from the ages of six how did the transition of going from playing classical to tech and deep house come along what inspired you to opt for them genres well I, I used to do classical music and I used to teach um classical music when I was about 15 and I feel like techno has there's there's classical music really gets into people's souls and it, it evokes them emotionally and for me the only form of modern music that can react to people in the same way is techno because it's structurally very similar to classical music it's very emotional it takes you on a journey you know there's highs there's lows there's big you know big bangs and everything else so it just seems like the most natural thing one just got bigger bass. <laughs> um, do you recall your first gig? If so, where was it held and what was the biggest highlight from that particular set? It was, um, we were doing this uh, gig at number three Cromwell. No, and Selfridges. Norton. Oh, Selfridges, yeah. We, we, our first gig was, uh, we then did a two week gig uh, at Selfridges, um, DJing for a, a couture. We were pr- um, helping to promote a couture hair product. Oh, yeah. We arranged the gig before we could even DJ, so we had a month to learn, um, which was quite exciting when yeah. the pressure's on. We kind of learned. You know, Work well under pressure. We, we sort of learned in front of people. It was it was such a huge learning curve that two weeks. You know, and it was obviously you know it was crowds and you know kind of everyone watching us and it was amazing. We sort of got addicted to the adrenaline rush there and then really. Um, was that like North or East London? And no, so that's Central London. Selfridges is uh, located in W one, so right in the heart of London. It's one of its like biggest. Uh, Shopping, shopping, yeah, shopping malls. Oh, See, London's too big for me, man. I've been there now probably like two or three times. Got lost every time. Uh, <laughs> you've just not been out with the... I'm a, I'm a London, <laughs> I'm a capital rookie. Um, it's no secret to many that you built your name in and around London. What kind of platform do you think this has offered to you in terms of getting noticed? And where is your pl- favourite place to play in London? I would say actually we played an amazing we played at an amazing party um, one of abodes parties on Saturday and we played to to over two thousand people um, on the terrace at Studio Three Three Eight and I have to say it was an amazing it was feeling. it was probably the best feeling yet that we've experienced DJing just because the vibe the Very crowd proud. the energy. Um, you know the sound system there was fantastic. I'd probably say our, our, my that most enjoyable guess, party yeah. was probably uh, uh, this Saturday. They just gone at Abode. Um, yeah, so for everyone you know who hasn't checked out Abode, uh, please do. Um, they throw wicked parties. Um, and what and how how has London got you noticed? Role in sort of our. What, sorry, what was the other question? Um, how, is, how do you think London's as a platform has gotten noticed? I guess it's just because London There's is so, much so vast and there is so much going on. I mean, I definitely don't think London is the best place to actually come and hear, um, you know, techno, for example. You know, I, do, I don't actually think it compares to somewhere like Germany. But, you know, London has got so much going on, you know some of the best venues in the world depending on what you like you know it's artists are always going to get booked to come to London people are always going to have their eyes on London whether it's your cup of tea or not um you know there are probably a lot of other countries and cities that are far more our cup of tea but London's our home and you know we're at the early stages of our career um and obviously it, it makes sense that you know we would sort of concentrate on on cracking London first um but yeah, I, th- I think we've we've been very blessed to have been brought up in London, and so you know this is this has all been it's all come very naturally. The gigs, you know, we've we've had a huge network for years, and you know it's it's been great being able to to sort of um, tap into to it. tap into the tap into our network that we already had in place, really. Um, obviously, you mentioned Germany. Um, you've near enough mastered the concept of playing your trade in London. Next in April, you are scheduled to festival like, for your festival debut in Berlin. Um, what is it you're most looking forward to uh, performing in Berlin, and why? Um, something there's just something about Berlin. You know, it's just 
the techno techno capital of the world is is massive right now. You ever been there before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we go there as much as we can. If you haven't been, you as much as hu- as is humanly possible. I mean, it's uh, as an artist, it's we just draw so much inspiration from it. It's it's just it's. <sighs> It's just the place to be if you love techno and you want to play techno and you want to dance to techno and you want to talk to people that love techno. Um, you, you just can't have that same experience, unfortunately, in London. Um, have you ever been to anywhere like Ibiza? Have you ever been anywhere like Ibiza? Yeah, of course. Yeah, how, do you, how do you think like the, um, like the, the music for techno compares in Ibiza to Berlin? Berlin's a lot more raw. Berlin's a lot, a lot more real. You know, Ibiza's very. But Ibiza's got a lot of money floating around, and Berlin is not about that at all. It's about the music, one hundred. And it's it's a lot more experimental. So you'll yeah. hear things in Berlin that you would never hear in Ibiza. You know, don't get me wrong. You know that it's a style of techno that you know we don't dislike, and we'll still go out and you know party to it all night. But it's quite bouncy. It's I find it quite. Um, <sighs> I just don't find that it's got the soul um, that, you know, the, the techno that you'll hear in, in Germany, you know, Mannheim, Cologne, Berlin. It's just, it's a different, it's a different sound of techno. In Germany, it's, it's coming from the heart. Experimental and people are doing things with it um, that they're not doing with it in Ibiza. Um, of course, last year you went from strength to strength playing at We Are Festival in May. Um, what was your favourite memory playing there and what was so important about this gig in your in terms of career progression for you? It was our first festival, so, I mean, it was it was huge yeah. in that respect. For us, it was quite sentimental because we actually went to school um, in Upminster. Yeah, it was in our home, um, in, so, our, in our school town. Um, so, so it was, yeah. It was, it was really good having a lot of people that we knew around us and sort of loving what we were we doing. We had all our old schoolmates come over to, like, uh, Support our us. house beforehand, yeah. you know, at a big big pre-party you know our parents could be involved our family was there it was it was lovely to uh to, to play in a town that that played such a huge which is where Nicola and I met Nicola and I met in Upminster so it was it was really and fitting it, to play our first big 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 gig in Upminster and it really felt like the start of the start of something yeah, yeah. Quite the experience then <laughs> um switching gears now it's 2015 it's a brand new year um, besides your upcoming festival debut in Berlin, is there anything you can exclusively reveal to us in terms of dates or music releases? We've got a lot of uh, releases that we're expecting to come out this year. Um, as for dates, not quite got anything yet. Um, we've got uh, an event, a really exciting event coming up called Bedroom Rave uh, on the 28th of November. 28th um, of February. It's also 28th of February. God. Don't wish the year away. <laughs> No, we've got lots of things um, booked. I mean, we're playing every weekend, every week, but unfortunately, you know, it's it's it's, it's all know, in the pipeline. It's, there's not there's certain things that you know we can't we can't discuss on here. Yeah, obviously. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no bedroom rave on the twenty eighth of February is going to be insane. Um, we, we are festival again. Um, we've got a lot of international stuff coming up, but again, it's we can't talk too much about it just because certain things aren't 100% confirmed. And finally... On our website and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, so everyone that's listening, just follow Violent Blondes and uh, you can keep keep up to date with us every hour. And finally, if you got the opportunity to collaborate with any one artist in the world, who would it be and why? I would say female, it would have yeah. to be. You're only allowed, you're only allowed one, remember? <laughs> Nina Kravitz, she's our yeah. idol, our absolute idol. So, so. Oh, she was in, she was incredible this year. I worked in Ibiza, she was amazing in DC yeah, 10. I saw her in Ibiza enter, enter on. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've been following her now for years, um, and she, yeah, she, we, we, we just totally idolise her. She, yeah, she just sort of skyrocketed this year. She's done really, really, really well. Yeah, and it's been amazing. Like we, you know, we sort of follow her, and it's, it's been amazing to see her progression and, and a real, a real inspiration. All right, thanks, girls. No, thank, no, thank, you. You. thank you. Thanks for having us. No problem. That was my very first interview of the new year. I would like to say thank you to the girls for sparing the time for that interview. Pleasure to talk to them. If you missed it, you can catch it on podcast over the weekend. Remember, follow them at Volum Blondes and check out their music. 
Now we enter the top three. Or next on the show, here is a girl who has been cementing her name slowly but surely on the scene of Manchester. Here is a five-minute sample of Fat Kids Cake. Mixtape number three by Sean Bennett. Number three.
That was indeed Sean Bennett in at number three. Follow her on Twitter at Sean Bennett or expect big things from her in 2015. Now on to number two, as voted by you guys, the Adams Addicts, is an Essex-based DJ slash producer who has toured all over Europe. He's had a big summer in Ibiza last year. He currently runs a radio show called Strictly Deep every Tuesday, 8 till 10 p.m. on Confetti Digital, the world. Literally is his oyster at the moment. This is Just Jay with a five-minute sample of one of his very first tracks, Wisdom of House. Number two.
That was Wisdom of Haste by Just J. Definitely a name to look out for in 2015. It just adds a bit more excitement to the Adam's Addiction. In fact, next week on the show, Just J will be appearing as a special guest and will be playing an exclusive 15-minute guest remix. Certainly one to look forward to. We are now drawing to a close. Thank you for your support for the second episode of The Adam's Addiction in 2015. As always, I really appreciate your support. I want to thank Sports Radio Birmingham for giving me the platform to enable this show to air every single Thursday at 8pm. Don't miss it. Big things in the future. I want to say a big thank you to the Violent Blondes for appearing on the show this week. And I want to wish all the DJs that have appeared on the chart and that were nominated the very best in the future. Um, if you want to find out more about the show, follow me on Twitter at the Adams EXP. Check out my blog, theadamsexperience.wordpress.com. And if you've missed any of today's show, check out www.srbradio.com for the repeat podcast. It will also be repeated on Channel K next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Thank you again. I hope you've enjoyed the chart countdown of the breakout DJs to watch out for in 2015. Here's a quick re- recap for you before we go. Number 10 was Christoph. Number 9, Little by Little. 8, Anik. Number 7 was Santa. In at number 6 was Philip George. Number 5, Richie Ahmed. Number 4, Patrick Topping. In at number 3 was Sean Bennett. Number 2 was Just J. Tweet me at the Adams EXP as I want to hear your opinions. Um, see if you agree or disagree what your uh, thoughts are on the chart. To close us out, though, this is your official number one. You voted in your thousands this past week to decide the chart, and out of all the nominees that were available to choose from, this girl came out on top. She exploded onto the dance music scene back in 2012, and it hasn't looked back since. An expert in playing deep in tech house. She's played a trade all over London, including clubs like Pasha. She's played alongside the likes of MK and Sam Devine. She also hosts her own radio show every Thursday night, 7 till 9pm. It's called More House, Less Sleep. I'm representing 107.3 FM. This is Lost City Music Festival promo mixed by the one, the only Ellie Cox. Follow her on Twitter at Cox LA. This is a big one, addicts. Don't miss it. Ellie Cox is going to be massive in 2015. I hope you've had a blast tonight. I'll see you next week with Just J. Have a good one. Number one.
The Adams Addiction was produced by Matty Adams, co-produced by Chris Brown and edited by Chris Brown. This has been an srbradio.com production.